What up everybody, this is Bleak Rides. I am here at Medellin Sport Rentals. We've got some guys back there cleaning up the bikes. We've got my partner Los with me. We're getting ready to go on an epic journey, epic ride, epic adventure. Can't wait to show y'all. Bleak Riders, how cool is this place? Drop it in the comments below. where we're at. Medellin is the capital of Colombia's mountainous Anticoya province, nicknamed the City of Eternal Springs for its temperate weather. It hosts famous annual flower festivals. Uh, has a lot of modern amenities, has a lot of sculpture, a whole lot of beauty. Everywhere you look, beauty, tropical, people, living, breathing city. Hey everybody, got the bike rented, made it back to the hotel by just stopping on the street and checking my GPS. I got no, no way to hold my phone, no way to hold the camera, but this is what I rented. Um, what is it? I, I don't know. A Unishock 6-speed, 200cc go-getter, I guess. Um, Try to get some more footage of around the city. Just stop back to the hotel, probably grab a bite, and then uh, we'll hit the road. Thank you for coming along on Bleak Rides. Bleak Rides, I'm here at my hotel. They rolled out all the security. I'd like to think it's for me. You know, I'm pretty big here in Colombia. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm the fattest guy in this city, which is something. Uh, yeah, about to go hop back on the bike, do some more riding, check out some more of this beautiful city with no traffic laws, no real zoning theory. I'm so blown away by this place. It's so radically different than everything I'm used to. Uh, small mindedness breeds small mindedness. And getting to see such a cool place where so many things are unique so much of the architecture is unique to this area um it's very wet here i'm like i'm habitually covered in that's terrible i'm constantly covered in in a layer of of this water but uh wouldn't trade any of this for the world we'll go hop back on the bike get some more try to get some footage on the bike see if i can't strap this gopro to it somehow and that's all we got to do Just listening to the Google. So where are we going? Left and left, right, right. Somewhere along the way I realized I packed like a fool. A damn fool. I didn't bring really any of my GoPro equipment. I was worried about crime. Everyone I talked to said, hey man, Columbia's rough area. You gotta watch out, people jack your stuff. I didn't find that to be true at all. Then again, I didn't wave my stuff around like I wanted it to be jacked. Uh, I was respectful to the people. The people were nothing but respectful to me. I will say, if you have a great big bushy beard, the people here don't really see that too often and they will look at you. It was the first time in life, everywhere I went, I was looked at, stared at, glared at. I didn't really know what it meant, but now that I've experienced that, it's interesting to feel like an outsider, to feel like the one who doesn't fit in. This puddle here that I'm about to hit is a lot of fun. Anyway, let's, let's talk some more about the city of Medellin. The traffic laws are very loose here. Uh, you can lane split. 
I, I haven't got a whole lot of exposure to this in the United States, but I got a whole lot of exposure to it here in Colombia. It's really amazing. I didn't see any accidents. The people sort of just figure it out. Uh, they're all very patient. You'll hear little beep beeps, but nobody lays on the horn. I didn't hear a single Colombian screaming at another Colombian, hey, get out of my way, hey, you're doing something wrong. All the people were incredibly nice to each other. They were all incredibly aware and respectful of each other. Uh, all the city kind of moves with this synchronous, almost like a watch movement, you know. Uh, it, it all just works. Uh, sure, it can get out of whack. Uh, there are parts where intersections seemed like chaos, but organized, organized chaos, something in there. It was so amazing. Uh, normal stoplights, this is, this is the one rule. Stop at the stoplights. There are cameras up, they're pointed right at the intersections. You will get a ticket. Uh, I had to put up a healthy deposit for the bike. My, my business partner had to put up a healthy deposit for his scooter. I think the deposits were less about damage and more about the myriad of tickets uh, touristas like myself might incur while traveling the city. I will emphasize my complete naivety. I thought I knew a little, a sliver, a scratch about two wheels, about motorcycles in general. I thought I knew brands, uh, breeds, something. I get to South America and every motorcycle here is a mystery to me. There was a Harley dealership. I went there. If you go over to my Facebook, I think there's a little video of me talking about a Pan American. But um, I've seen a couple BMW GS 1250s. Uh, you know, I've seen a Husqvarna. Uh, I've seen a couple Jixers. Saw so very few Kawasaki's and what I did see were real small CC. Honda was pretty big here, but the one-offs that I'd never heard of, Banale, Victory, and I'm not talking the Victory we have back home with the big cruisers, these little sporty bikes. Uh, Pulsar, Pulsar was a big one. The Boxer, lots of singles, lots of small displacement bikes that I, I had never seen before. And, and to add to that, my business partner here, Mr. Lose, he's on a scooter. I never gave scooters two second glances. That scooter hauls. It's uh, it's really, he can get going. Uh, he actually stomps this little 200cc, whatever I'm on. Uh, it, it, it was just amazing to get up and go that scooter had. And I guess I had never really even considered a scooter. But now, seeing how nimble it was around the city, seeing Los just handle, handle it masterfully, I see their place. I see the place for the scooter in the city. Um, and I see them more as a, a compatriot to the two-wheel life. I, it's all about growing my understanding. I love traveling. I love doing vlogs. I love learning about stuff. And the only way to do that is uh, to get out there to expose yourself and maybe expose yourself to others and see what the world has to offer see what it can give you back see what you can get from it this place had so much amazing food like I said bikes I'd never seen before um, a rich a rich history that yes has its share of blood I don't know what place in the world doesn't has its share of strife I had a guide while I was here. Uh, he, you know, he took us to some places where whistling was the way to let you know there was an outsider around. I heard a lot of whistling. I'm pretty sure in one burial, they thought I was policia. I find that pretty funny. But, you know, I was the outsider. Being the outsider in a city that doesn't know you, it, it's a humbling experience. Being in a place where I didn't know the people, I didn't know the language. I mostly navigated through translator apps. I had a little currency exchange app. That was truly
truly awe-inspiring. The people here work so hard. Uh, minimum wage is three bucks an hour. You know, most people work 12-hour days, a lot of them seven days a week. Our guide was a full-time cabbie and also part-time uh, tourist guide. He made himself completely available. Uh, you know, we took care of him where we could. And uh, he showed us places that, I don't know, were off the beaten path. And, and it really felt like, on this trip in particular, I got a channel a little of my hero, Anthony Bourdain. I got to try some food that I normally wouldn't have experienced. I wish I had packed more equipment. The, the thing to remember next time, in, in my next major trip, is to pack the proper equipment, to make sure I have the ability to shoot the footage that I'm gonna wanna watch, because that's what I make for myself, and that's what I'm hoping you guys enjoy. And I know a lot of my content is kind of unpolished. I do my best. I'm just a guy learning. Got a, got a computer. I do my editing in my basement. You know? But that's bleak rides. We're not fancy here. We just try to, we just try to be real here. Um, showcase the good in every place. The world's got enough negativity. If we could have a little bit more good vibes, good rides, good people might just change something. Wouldn't that be something? Uh, this place, Medellin, I, I don't get enough of the stuff I wanted to cover really shot because of my lack of gear, and some of that was the cable car system. This whole town's accessible through these cable car systems. It looks like you're in, I don't know, the Swiss Alps. You got these cable cars going up the sides of mountains to the different barrios definitely picked up a little bit of the Spanish while I was here. I don't know how you could not. I definitely got to see how other people live. And I got to be thankful for what I have achieved. a ton of footage I bet I can make another video or two just with some of the scraps I have left over and some of the unused stuff I haven't even finished sorting through but I wanted to get something out there this was really exciting uh, it was a big deal for me it was a major step for the channel and a major step for the for my vlogging career as it were and you know everyone who tunes into bleak ride you're a part of that as well you're on this journey with me and I want to thank you all for coming along I mean it really it makes it that much more special for me getting to show places getting to talk getting to getting to share experiences good vibes and uh, y'all be safe out there keep on coming back to bleak rides <laughs>